Ranger Studios and History Dog Productions is spotlighting a heartbreaking casualty from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Although every life lost is more heartbreaking than a man-made object, the world's largest and most photographed airplane in the world has been destroyed in Kyiv, Ukraine. Following will be a tribute from aviation lovers around the world to the largest flying object ever made by man. First look inside right now, the Antonov. Wow. This could actually fit about six houses or so fully assembled inside the belly of this aircraft. You really could have football practice in here. This thing is 144 feet long in the cargo bay area. How far is that?
this far. The crews have just arrived here. They're the ones who are gonna be flying it out of here in about an hour or so. Next place we're gonna be going is up into the, uh, the cockpit area. Okay, let's go up to the cockpit. Wow. Over here is the crew quarters. It's like a, a little submarine through here. The crews are busy right now getting ready. They're about to take off in about an hour. Well, hello from the uh, cockpit. We're about three stories up here. This thing is getting ready for takeoff in a short time. Hey guys, when you're finished checking the oil, can you clean the windshield please? There's bugs on it. Thank you. We are coming each airfield and many, many people coming to see like a uh, photographer, some TV, or simply just an uh, old person who are living uh, close to airfield. Could I take off in this thing? Do you think I could fly this? Uh, just normal. If I'm at the end of the runway and I'm about to take off, basically all I have to do is push that forward and, and off we go? Yeah, release brake, push forward the throttle. So just release the brake yeah. and push the throttle and keep steering? Yeah. I'm proud to be pilot of this aircraft. Each takeoff, each landing, it's amazing. Amazing. It's really amazing. But for, for me, it, it's usual job, nothing special. But uh, all times I feel uh, something unbelievable uh, things inside when I uh, control this aircraft. So let's, uh, let's now look at yesterday afternoon's uh, takeoff. It just it really is. All of a sudden, it's airborne. 
And it was just the snow was just Makes coming no in. Makes no sense, Kev. Look how big that thing is. Makes no sense. <laughs> I can hear it. Watch out, look, here it comes. Here it comes, look at it, looks. Right there behind the trees. Oh my god. Holy shit. <laughs> Looks like a building. Oh my god. Fucking ears, Lucas. Good evening. The world's biggest plane is parked at Perth International Airport tonight on its first visit to Australia. There was traffic chaos as 16,000 spectators came to see the Antonov AN-225 cargo plane touch down. Looming above homes, this giant of the sky descends on Perth's International Airport. Six engines and wings spanning more than 88 metres just after 11.30 this morning, touchdown. Delayed by two hours in Kuala Lumpur, this is the first time the Antonov has landed in Australia. Alpha Delta Bravo 3610, welcome to Perth. The 28-year-old cargo carrier was welcomed by a water salute drenched after its six-day trip from the Ukraine. Massive. It's well worth coming down. That's pretty impressive, yeah? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's good fun to see something a bit different. Uh, to see it in real life is just mind-blowing. You have to be here to see it. But we gave it the biggest welcome. More than 15,000 lining the fences, cramming into viewing decks. The Australian media also in position to see the Antonov land safely. Aviation enthusiasts travelled across the country.
camping outside the airport for more than four hours. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity I think to, to see this great plane in the flesh up close. And there's people come over here from the eastern states, uh, there's people monitoring its movements online throughout the world, so they've been tracking its flight all the way from Prague to here. It also caused major traffic headaches. Roads around the airport at a standstill. Sam Vincent was forced to abandon his car just to make his flight. We got out from Kel's parents' car because we just had no other choice. Probably about a four, four and a half day walk. There was quite a lot of congestion on the roads. We managed it as best we could today. Um, but with 16,000 people coming to the terminal in one hit, that's a lot to manage. So there may have been some small impacts, but nothing significant today. Built in 1988, it was originally designed to carry the Buran space plane for the Soviet space program, but now makes only commercial flights. The giant Russian aircraft is 84 metres long, compared to a 747's 70 metres. Wingspan is 88 and a half metres, the 747 by comparison a mere 60. And place the Antonov in the middle of a soccer field, there wouldn't be much room at either end, and it would overlap the sidelines. Vigorous tests on our runway had to be done to make sure it could handle it. The Antonov can weigh up to 640 tonnes when it takes off. We've put a lot of planning in place and it's been a success, so hopefully everybody enjoyed the experience. It'll take up to 12 hours to unload the Antonov. Inside is the 117 tonne generator bound for a southwest refinery. The equipment was picked up in Prague on Tuesday and will be loaded from here onto trucks and taken to the mining site. Well, we don't know if it'll ever come back again um, because of it being one of a kind aircraft and it only gets used when there's a really uh, outsized load or something that's very, very heavy. It was really, really exciting and probably about the best thing and most awesome thing I've ever seen. And Ellie Cormack, as we saw there, a huge turnout at the airport this morning. More than 15,000 people turned up for a glimpse at the King of the Sky. Tracy, the main viewing deck was closed before 7.30 this morning. It was full and the roads around the airport were gridlocked as thousands from right across Australia turned out to see the world's biggest plane. Perth Airport, a car park. Tonkin Highway, Great Eastern Highway, bumper to bumper for kilometres. All we're trying to do is get home. We've come to a complete standstill back there. Uh, at least half, uh, half an hour to an hour. Police had to be called in as drivers parked in emergency lanes, eager to secure their spot to see the Antonov, leaving regular travellers caught up in the chaos. It's literally our honeymoon today, so uh, we're meant to be going to Bali, but uh, this bloody traffic, the biggest, the, the worst problem is the cars that are actually parked in one lane, they're taking up an entire lane back there. I've got to get there, I need to catch the plane. Very stressed because I'm rushing out for the flight, yeah. That was horrendous, yes, usually it takes us 10 minutes from where we live to come in, but it was just on an hour. By 7am, the viewing area on Dunreath Drive was packed. Free parking near Terminal 1 filled fast. This viewing area on Airport Drive became a festival of flight. Food trucks, portable toilets, security guards, as thousands jostled for the perfect view. So how excited are you to see this plane? I'm really excited, yeah, it's massive. We are here morning 7 o'clock uh, and we are waiting to see the plane and we are very eager to see that as well. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. And just before midday, eyes across Perth turned skywards. Whoa! The monster plane appeared over the Perth hills, a perfect landing, a cloud of smoke. The crowd breaking into applause. As the Antonov AN-22 Miria finally arrived. It began on Thursday in Prague before a refuelling stop in Turkmenistan to prepare for the 3,500 kilometre flight to India. From there it flew to Kuala Lumpur, arriving at 8 o'clock last night. Air traffic control delays this morning delayed the flight to Perth, the longest leg, more than 4,000 kilometres.
Among the spectators, members of Perth's Ukrainian community cheering on a giant built in their homeland. The pilot just as proud. I love planes. Yeah, so it was great. very exciting seeing it land. Well, it was a problem to me to come to airport because it was absolutely jammed by people who want to see this. I'm, I was so excited that big interest. So I'm really proud that it landed in Perth. Despite the congestion, police and main roads say spectators and most drivers were well behaved, with no major incidents to report. Eliza Fossil, Nine News. Wait, come here, you're so sick. I think it'd be easy. I know. Im Übrigen ist jetzt mit einer kurzzeitigen Sonnenfinsternis zu rechnen.
the Maria received countless water cannon salutes arrivals around the world in her lifetime. But on this last landing of her life at her home base in Kiev, Ukraine, she arrived in instrument meteorological conditions, or what pilots call IMC, a dismal snowstorm, but still loyal lovers of the Antonov braved the cold to see her land. No one knew this would be her last flight. We want to thank everyone whose footage made it into this tribute video. There are thousands of video clips of Maria on social media, and we tried to show a few of the best. We hope that someday the second Antonov will be finished. For now, we will compare the U.S. Air Force C-5 Galaxy to the Antonov so you can see the difference in the main gear wheelbase. Then, we will move into a brief history and demise of the Antonov from Curiosity Stream of Nebula and the Associated Press. This is Brian Baker for Aero Ranger Studios and History Dog Productions in the state of Arkansas, United States of America. Rest in peace, Maria. Thank you all for watching. Farewell to a dream. They killed the Maria. It seems that we should not cry about airplanes now, when cities are being crushed, houses destroyed, people maimed. And yet. During the fighting in Gostomol, where the runway changed hands, the Maria came under fire. It is frightening to imagine the engineering marvel, a huge good-natured giant with six engines, whose body is torn by bombs and shot through by shells. Mutilated, the Maria now stands in the hangar at the airfield. It was the only Maria that flew. The second plane, unfinished, for years stood in the hangar of Antonov Design Bureau, which had created it in the Soviet times, when the war between the Russians and Ukrainians was unimaginable and impossible. Before the Maria the biggest airplane in the world was the wooden flying boat of millionaire Howard Hughes, who designed it and took it into the air himself. But Hughes' giant flew only once, flew two kilometers, and then stood on the ground for decades as a monument to the mania that possessed the rich man. The Maria was not like that. There was no extravagance in her appearance, she was a hard-working giant with quadruple duplication of all systems and with huge wingspan of almost 90 meters. To imagine, that's the length of a soccer field. The largest airplane in the history of aviation, it could lift 250 tons of cargo. It could carry 50 cars in its huge belly. There were rails laid on the fuselage floor and containers the size of a railroad car were brought in. There are pictures that show a ship being loaded into the Maria, a helicopter, and a huge multi-wheeled truck coming out of its belly. On its back, like a circus strongman, Maria carried the spaceship Buran and demonstrated this trick at the airshow in La Burgett. An-225 Maria is a transport jet of extra-large carrying capacity, developed by the Antonov Design Bureau. It is the biggest in carrying capacity airplane over the whole history of the world aviation. The reason of building the AN-225 was the necessity of creation of the air transportation system for the project of the Soviet multiple spacecraft Buran. The main purpose of the aircraft within the framework of this project was transportation of various components of the launch vehicle and spacecraft from the place of production and assembly to the launch site. The airplane exists in a single copy. The aircraft was designed in the USSR and built in 1988 at the Kiev Mechanical Plant. The aircraft was capable of transportation of general-purpose cargo with a total weight of up to 250 tons, intracontinental non-stop transportation of cargoes with a weight of 180 to 200 tons, intercontinental transportation of cargoes up to 150 t in weight, transportation of heavy large-size mono cargoes weighing up to 200 t outside on the fuselage, the airplane was the base for creating aerospace systems. 
the aircraft had a roomy cargo cockpit that allowed for the transportation of various cargoes inside the fuselage, e.g., 16 10-ton Universal Aviation Container Zuak 10, 50 cars, mono cargo up to 200 tons, turbines, generators, dump trucks bellas, Komatsu, Euclid and the like. For the first time it took off to the sky in December 21, 1988 from the factory airfield of Antonov Development and Design Bureau. The flight lasted an hour and a half. After the collapse of the USSR, the only flying copy of the plane stopped flying in 1994, the engines and other equipment were removed from it for use in the Ruslands. However, by the 2000s, there was a demand for it, and it was restored by Ukrainian enterprises. Also, the airliner underwent modifications to meet the standards of civil aviation aircraft. On May 23, 2001, type certificates were issued for the An-225 Maria, which allowed to start commercial use of the aircraft as a cargo carrier. Currently, the An-225 is registered in Ukraine and performed commercial cargo operations as part of Antonov Airlines, the air transportation division of Antonov Design Bureau. The An-225 was the heaviest freighter ever put into the air. The only aircraft superior to the An-225 in wingspan is the Hughes H-4 Hercules, which belongs to the class of flying boats and has flown only once in 1947. The Maria aircraft set a number of world records for takeoff weight and payload. On March 22, 1989 the An-225 made a flight with a cargo of 156.3 tons, in which 110 world aviation records were simultaneously broken. In August, 2009 the plane was entered into the Guinness Book of World Records for transportation of the biggest cargo in aviation history with the total weight of 187.6 tons. It was a 174-ton generator, which was transported together with a special frame from Frankfurt to Yerevan for the new Armenian power plant. On June 10, 2010 the longest cargo in the history of air transportation was transported, two blades of a wind turbine 42.1 meters long each. In total, this aircraft is the holder of about 250 world records. The second specimen of the An-225 is about 70% ready. It was planned to be completed at the Antonov plant, if funding was available. On August 30, 2016, the Chinese company Aerospace Industry Corporation of China, AICC, and the Ukrainian state enterprise Antonov signed a letter of intent, which provides for the completion and modernization of the second instance of the An-225 with the subsequent transfer of it to China, along with documentation and drawings. However, in December 2017, the media reported that the Chinese authorities had lost interest in the aircraft, as most airports in the world are unable to accept aircraft of such weight and size. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, no one needed the plane, just as no one needed universities, factories, or people. But then, little by little, the Antonov Design Bureau and the Ukrainian aircraft industry brought the giant back to life. Maria was flying and carrying oversized huge cargoes, it was flying from Ukraine to Australia, from Ukraine to Brazil, from Ukraine to Asia and Europe. There was demand for Maria flights in the global air services market. At the beginning of February the Maria carried cargo from Tianjin China to Denmark and then returned from Denmark to its home airfield in Gostomol for repairs. The engines were removed from its wings, six powerful modular turbojet D-18TS created in Zaporozhye. For a huge plane, a huge engine, the diameter of the D-18T is 2.3 meters. Maria was standing without engines and therefore, when it started, could not fly away. The other huge Antonov Design Bureau planes, the Ruslans, took off like birds, frightened by the approaching howl of demons and the rumble of fighting, and flew away. At the end of January and beginning of February they were filming one by one and flying off to Malaysia, Kyrgyzstan, and Europe. We in those days were still only guessing about the future and hoping for the best, but the planes already knew. The Mriya, huge and clumsy on the ground, hardly touching the concrete with its mighty belly, remained. During the last days there were different rumors about the destiny of Mriya. Hundreds, thousands of people all over the world were worried about her. Mitro Antonov, the pilot who flies the Mriya, at first wrote that the plane survived, but then that it died. The Mriya's demise, which means dream, was confirmed by Akrabaramprim. There is no more a huge good-natured plane with blue and yellow stripes on the thick fuselage, with the wings beveled back, under which the engines hung in a clear row. In the bloody mess that was going on at Gostomol, the plane could not have survived. Hundreds of barrels were fired at an airplane that had never carried and could never carry bombs, had never threatened anyone, had no missile hangers on its wings, had no bomb hatch, was designed for peaceful work. 
Those who bemoan the Soviet Union and rave about its rebirth through blood and fire have destroyed one of its major achievements. Mitro Antonov, commander of the Mriya aircraft, has a YouTube channel where he talked about the plane month after month. The unique footage of the aircraft's work and flights has remained forever. This plane is such a giant that no matter how fast it flies, it still seems smooth and unhurried. The good power is its character. In one of the videos we hear the voice of the commander of the aircraft saying the famous Gagarin's word, but in Ukrainian, let's go. We see the mesmerizing night run through the framed runway lights, we hear the voice counting down the speed, the engineer's message of nominal mode, we see the nose slowly rise into the night sky and the giant flies. It was a global plane. Under its wings was the whole earth, the blue mountains of the Tian Shan, and the blue waters of the ocean, and white caps on the tops of the Caucasus, and sunsets of Africa, and sunrises of America, and the vast expanses of China. This plane was everywhere, and by its flights, united the globe into a single human community. Maria was indeed a dream of Ukraine, a bright, good-natured dream, that everything will be fine, that the country is alive, that its aircraft industry is alive, that the creative forces of people will be enough to slowly, little by little pull the country to a decent good life, to the well-being. And now Maria has been killed. And I read on the net what Ukrainians write about it. They write that these days they are used to living without tears, with dry rage in their souls. But there are tears at the news of the death of huge beautiful Maria. That the combat helicopters of Kamov and Mill would come with fire to the aerodrome of Antonov Design Bureau and crash its aircraft, neither Kamov, nor Mill, nor Antonov could imagine this. Serious people, outstanding engineers, each with their own complicated fate, they could not have imagined such a demoniacal and such nonsense that does not fit in human consciousness. Viktor Ilyich Tolmachev, the chief designer of the Maria, was a Russian man from Kursk who had dreamed of aviation since childhood. His whole life was spent in Ukraine, where he graduated from the Kharkov Aviation Institute and then worked all his life in the famous Antonov Design Bureau. Russian engineer, Ukrainian aircraft designer, it was in his life inseparable. But now the Mriya is dead, and Russians and Ukrainians are enemies. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read. Вот такое 1 апреля 2022 года. Гастомель. Здесь побывал русский мир. Больше никаких предложений говорить не надо. Это просто ужас. Это наше здание. Вот здесь я 29 лет проработал. Каждый день на работу. Все разграблено. Не нашел ничего. Ни документов, ни сейфа, ничего. Машины тоже не нашел. Что это значит? Это значит, пришел русский мир ко мне на работу. Ну, в таком виде, ну, в общем, ах, и вот такой вид самая крайняя комната имеет. Что можно сказать? Вот это все называется пришел русский мир. Русский мир приблизительно имеет вот такой вид. По-другому у них не получается. Остатки от машин. Все разграблено. Эти колеса. А дальше еще хуже. Тут дальше все сгорело. А моей машины просто нет. Вот физически нету. Я даже не знаю. Вот корпус. Вот там у нас комната отдыха на четвертом этаже, метео, 
доктора, диспетчерский пункт, все значит, а тут убитая техника и створка ворот. Ну, наверное, оттянули, действительно специально оттянули, чтобы можно было заезжать туда. Стоим и думаем, что здесь кто-то есть. А это ветер гуляет, и остатки от ворот скрипят. Но это Ми-24, по всей видимости, да? Нет. Это 74-ка. Двигателей нет. Фюзеляжа нет. Салона нет. Ан-26. Тоже недавно. Ну, в качестве пассажира единственное. Летал на нем. Вот. Даже хватит. Вот так гибнут самолеты. Мама, а это тоже какие-то тоже боевые машины, да? Да, да, броневые машины. Так, а чьи? А, думаешь наши? А. И мотор, чуть поднимали моторы. Господи, как? Видите, что тут? А там ничего не было? Нет, там, там вроде ничего не было. Пошли сюда уже, раз зашли, пошли сюда, зайдем вначале. Он мре, мре. мре стоит, да, пошли. Смотрим, идем. Вот отсюда снимала та россиянка, стояла. Да. Я кроса 
Sana 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 s